Hi, today we're going to talk about standard molar entropies. And basically what we're going to be discussing is how you can calculate the change in entropy for a reaction, because that ends up being very important. So in the previous video, I mentioned that we can actually calculate absolute values for entropies of various substances at a given temperature. And so it's possible to look in the back of your book or places like that and get the entropy values for a particular substance. The other thing you need to know before we go further is that entropy is a state function. Now remember, a state function is any function where it doesn't matter how you get to a place. What matters is the difference between your final state and your initial state. So if you imagine an ice cube and you imagine it melting, you know that the entropy of that system is going to change. In the ice cube, the water molecules are very ordered. In a puddle of water, they're not going to be very ordered and so the entropy would increase there. But I want you to imagine another situation. In this situation, the ice cube doesn't melt. What it does is it sublimes, so it turns into gaseous water molecules, and then it condenses to form a puddle of water. How does the entropy change in this reaction? Well, because entropy is a state function, the entropy changes in exactly the same way because our starting state is an ice cube, solid water, and our ending state is that same puddle of water. It does not matter whether or not it goes through the gaseous phase. The change in entropy of a reaction at standard state can be calculated just by pulling values out of those standard entropy tables in the back of your book. And basically, to calculate the change in entropy of a reaction, you're first going to sum up the entropies of all of the products, and you're going to subtract the sum of the entropies of all the reactants. So let's look at a couple of examples, and I will talk you through some important points. So now we're going to calculate the change in entropy for this particular reaction in which gaseous sulfur trioxide reacts with liquid water to form aqueous sulfuric acid. This is the reaction that causes acid rain. So here is our equation that I brought up on the previous slide. And what we're going to do is sum up the entropies of all of our products. Well, we actually only have one product, H2SO4, minus the sum of the entropies of all of our reactants. In this case, that would be gaseous SO3 and liquid water. So it's important to add up the things that are in the parentheses before you subtract one from the other. But let's go through our table and identify what we need here. We have aqueous sulfuric acid, we have gaseous SO3, and then we have water. And you'll notice in this table, we have two different values for water, gaseous water and liquid water. And notice that the entropies are very different. Gaseous water has far more entropy than liquid water because gaseous water molecules can move around more and there's more possibilities for how they can move. So it's really important to choose the correct state for your reactants. And in this particular case, we're looking at liquid water. So we are going to choose this value here. So now we can go ahead and plug those into our equation and run that through our calculator and we get negative 169.16 joules per mole Kelvin. It is very useful to be able to look at a reaction and to just sort of eyeball whether the entropy will go up or down so you know if you're on the right track with your answer. So in this case, we're going from two molecules, one of which is gaseous, one of which is liquid, to one molecule, aqueous sulfuric acid. And anytime you have lots of molecules going to fewer molecules, you're going to have a reduction in entropy. Having a negative change in entropy sounds correct for this reaction. Here's another one. And once again, if you look at this, we've got a solid something combining with a gaseous something to make solid something. So we're going from partial gas to no gas. This seems like it would also be a reduced entropy sort of reaction. Furthermore, we're going from seven molecules to two molecules. That also seems like a reduced entropy sort of reaction. So there's a reason I chose this particular one. It does illustrate a point 
that I want to call out. So here's our equation. And remember, we need to calculate the entropy for our products. And it looks like we only have one product, aluminum oxide. Well, we have two molecules of aluminum oxide. Likewise, for our reactants, we don't just have two reactants. We actually have seven reactant molecules, and those all need to be accounted for. And so when we make this equation specific to the reaction, we need to multiply each of those entropy amounts by the coefficients in the balanced reaction. So we have two times the entropy of aluminum oxide, four times the entropy of aluminum, three times the entropy of oxygen. So let's go through, we can find these in our table. Here's our aluminum, our oxygen, and our aluminum oxide. And we can plug those in. Again, remember to do everything within the brackets before you do that final subtraction. And we end up with a change of negative 626.2 joules per mole Kelvin. I know this is a short video, but it ends up being very important because we are going to need to be calculating entropies of reactions. And basically the way we do that is by looking at the balanced reaction and using it to pull the appropriate values out of the entropy tables. I hope this was helpful and I will see you again soon.